Ms. Jambo 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 Omune Tule Gogi Missanong Novokwanguti and go quit and any seron Arab Jelule, Arab Jesoni, Amite Germany, Olegure Bremeni, Angola Luang at Tegeo Lee, Kimite Co quit live. Special edition Never be to Tabrani, Negingology, Jeb Kamatinio, Gladys, Doctari, Doctor Engineer. Kimoa Gunotang German, Gilin Doctor Engineer Gladys Jepkirui Nettich. Doctor Jepkirui Nettich, Goinego Majesco Moy Wait K, Agoinego Kipsomanianio, Jepsomanianio, and Nebogalin Gini, Majesco Moy Kulubunuano. Come on, and Gladys, I think we are going to have to mix English and Kiswahili and, and, and Kipsigis and Nandi and Kalenjin and whatever it is that we can mix uh, so that we get this program is coming to you live, ladies and gentlemen, on a very important topic today. And the topic is on a book launch. We are launching a special book uh, that is meant to inspire, guide, and challenge PhD aspirants or people who want to become PhD holders on, on how to get there. How do, you, how do you start? How do you look for? How do you apply for? What do you do once you have an opportunity for a PhD? Gladys has authored several books and the one that we are going to launch today is entitled The PhD Journey. The PhD journey, as you can see down there, strategies and I don't know what it says, um, strategies of enrolling and succeeding in a PhD, whatever it is that it says, we are going to hear from Gladys. We're going to understand the motivation for writing this book. She will also give us tips and excerpts from the book. And then we will also take your questions on the forum. And I think without much ado, I'm going to introduce our guest for today. She will tell us about herself. Who are you? Where do you come from? And then we will move on from there. Dr. Ari Gladys. Ah, Santa Sana Gongoi, Dr. for hosting me, Rai Nigelaga, King on Nolga Visa. We are mixing it today. So I'm trying to mix. From Kalen yeah. to, to English, uh, so yes. by I, I can't speak German, but anyway, I can only mix the three. Yes. So uh, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure, and I appreciate you having me on your platform. You have an uh, amazing audience. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate you having me today. So I want to introduce myself, and I think I was here for, so for those who were here last time, we were launching another book with my friend Dr. Elisha Nyatich. Then you know that my name is uh, Gladys Nyatich. Uh, Gladys Chepiri Nyatich is my full Kalenji name. I was born and raised in a village, uh, it's called Amalu village in Keringet's uh, County in Akuru County. And that's where I grew up. I went to Massey Girls in Kipkelian and then uh, to J. Quart and to Oxford. And I'm currently working at MIT as a researcher. And then I think we'll go into some degree of details uh, uh, depending on where we want to touch on uh, later on. But uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, who I am. Um, I don't know if did I leave anything yeah, I mean, uh, Gladys, uh, kindly send your warm regards to your fellows. There are people watching you all the way from Ulenguruone. I've seen, um, I've seen Langat um, watching you directly from your, your native village in, in Ulenguruone. I, I missed his message. Where was it? There was, um, he's super excited. Uh, Isaac Langat is following you from Ulenguruone, Amalawad, Kabigeriet village, ready to hear from our daughter. So definitely these oh. are your your homies these are people from your your neck of the woods yeah um, and it would be great that you give them a shout out uh, oh, before yeah. we proceed aya thank you so much aisa kongoi known for tuning in and yeah uh, I, i'm i'm sending all the warmest regards to my people in olamba olenguruani actually yeah although i come from kerenketsa county but i think uh, i'm used to saying i come from olenguruani because i think olenguruani town go it's closer 
kongeten kaa dan keringet. But anyway, so big tukul chepo lombo lombrone big up keringet. Oh, got up tukul. Uh, um, yes, let's 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 uh, let's engage in this forum. I get what happens at the end. Yes, thanks for joining. Very good. Gladys, I know you mentioned that you were here with Dr. Langat. You introduced your book. You were also here before that, and you gave us a brief journey through your education. Yeah. Um, just let's go through you know a bit of it. Just if you can leap frog from one to the other. Uh, your family, so Gladys, you know, your family, and I know when we talk about family, we're talking about the Mr. Ngetich family. Uh, so how is it, how is Gladys in the family? Where do you sit in the, uh, in the family org chat? If you, you do the organization chat in the family, where are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so our family, give family known, family of Mesere. nine, is yeah. Yeah, family yeah. number nine, I have, I have eight siblings. Uh, four brothers in in Tainane, uh, uh, three sisters, Numayangu, and one brother. So I'm um, fifth born. So I'm equal in the organization of church in our family. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, good. The one I like joking, but okay, in the mama dad, we will make a, a complete soccer team. Oh, fantastic! And 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 you know, you played soccer, isn't it? In your yes, in, I in, do. Your, I in your school do. days. Yeah, I still do actually. Yes yeah so take us through your journey you know you went you went to a primary school went to a high school went to and and you know there is the the funny part about your high school education which a lot of people may not understand yeah uh, when i laugh about it but the truth is it was it was both hilarious and eye-opening yes. uh, you know making you very human very personal and and really yes. um you know despite all the achievements you've made in your mm -hmm. academic journey, that really makes you very real and very practical, very, um, as our people like to say, very down to earth. Yes. Oh, yeah, that, I like talking about it, mostly because I know someone gets motivated because yes. when I transport myself back to Ginomi you know, primary and Ginomi you know, secondary school, I, I think thinking about where I've gotten to and where I've come from, I don't think anyone would have believed or even even myself. So I like sharing my story, hoping that some students somewhere or some parents somewhere will get motivated and, and continue continue supporting their their, their kids and, and giving them second chances. So let me start, I'll, I'll go briefly and then I think we can go in depth later, depending on the questions that we have. But I'm, I'm going to give you just a brief summary of my primary school life, secondary school life, and, and, and bachelor's, where I did my bachelor's degree, and then maybe we can pause there, and, and then we move on to my life uh, outside Kenya. So my primary school is Lelai Bay Primary School. So we have uh, Lomba Lelai Bay Primary School. So we have Lelai Bay Primary School from 1997 to 2004. And I think the story that many people know about me and my primary school, when I set for KCPE in 2004, Nikapata um, 298 marks out of 500. And I think given the, given the performance that year, the leading candidates are like one of 472. So compared to my marks, definitely I, 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 I had not done very well. So, and then I had, I think another surprising fact is I had 45% in English. So most of the English that I, I talk now and wh whatever I learned, most of it I learned in high school. And then um, at the end of primary school, Nikapata, um, uh, we, we, it was mostly my parents' idea that we try now with 298 marks, you, you know, it, it's so hard to get a very good school, like these top performing schools, Ningumu Kupata Huko. But luckily, Kuna, these mission schools that need you to do an, an entry exam, regardless of what you have. So as long as you have, I think uh, that time at Mercy, I don't know if they were, the cut point was 300 or it was 280, I can't remember. But anyway, once you meet that cut point, you can sit for entry exam and if you pass, you get a chance, and that's what we what we tried to do. I tried to I tried entry exam at Saint Francis. I don't know if we go to Saint Francis actually. They were all in the same same day. Saint Francis in Kiptere, Rolet Girls in Kericho, and then Masi Girls in Kipkelion. Anyway, um, they were testing maths and Kiswahili and English. So needless to say, it was a struggle to to get good marks because languages um, they were not my strong my strong side um, but I did get an admission to Massey Girls 
And then I was at uh, Massey Girls 205 to 2008. And that's where amazing transformation happened. When I look back now and people ask me, so from 298 marks, I was able to transform that to A minus of 80 points. And what is amazing is that, so Kip Kellyan, um, it doesn't have very, very, very good um, good schools, at least compared to like national ranking or like county, Kericho and neighboring, um, neighboring counties ranking. And with 80 marks, I was the best in the whole of district. I was the best in my school. And I think it was actually a record in my school and, and all that. And even the English, the 45% in English, I ended up scoring B plus, And I think it was one of the best in my school. Uh, but anyway, when I look back, I think the lessons and I like sharing lessons that I learned. The, the biggest lesson is that your condition right now uh, or where you are right now doesn't have to dictate where you will be five years, 10 years, 15 years. If you do something about it, if you actually if you actually want to improve and you want to get somewhere, and I think if you ask for help and you persist, I think you can get there. Um, obviously, yes, there will be challenges and, and whatnot, uh, but I, I think that's the biggest lesson that I learned because I was able to transform really low marks to very good marks. And with the good marks that I scored um, uh, at Mercy, I was able to go to, I got admission to JQuad to pursue mechanical engineering. So mechanical, the choice to pursue mechanical engineering, uh, I actually wanted to pursue mechanical engineering because uh, two of my brothers, had, they had um, studied civil and mechanical engineering. And so I kind of knew, I had some idea of what they were all about. And, and, and I wanted mechanical engineering. So I ended up um, at JQuad 2010 to 2014, pursuing mechanical engineering. And then towards the end of my engineering career at JQuad, I got an interest courtesy of a, of a classmate friend of mine who was passionate about uh, postgrad. And my, 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 that classmate of mine wanted to go out of Kenya. And that, that's where I was actually kind of infected, quote unquote, um, with the idea of, of going out of Kenya to pursue masters. Um, but anyway, I ended up not doing masters. I did a PhD uh, directly from undergrad. But yeah, we can pause there. And oh, and a lesson, lesson that I like sharing from my life at JQuad, uh, several lessons, but I think on top of the list, and I think something that we underestimate a lot in our campuses is the, is the idea of intentionality about choosing friends. So when I look back now, most of my close friends, uh, friends that we still do amazing things together, we met in campus. And I think there is a lot of time, a lot of time to, 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 to meet and connect with amazing people when you are in university. And I think we don't appreciate that or we take that for granted. So for me, the scholarship that I wrote scholarship that I ended up getting, it was a friend who told me to try. And mostly because they kind of they believed in me and I was doubting my abilities and they could see that I was able to do um, uh, and even the thought of doing a PhD directly from bachelor's, it was through the same friend. So anyway, just just to underscore, I think the importance of having an intentionally forming quality friendships uh, when you are in campus, I think it's really important. So I can pause there and then uh, we, we, we see where we want to go in depth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari. I think it's uh, you know super incredible that uh, we've taken you through that journey through high school until where we are at the moment. S sometimes I just pause and then I laugh. And when I, when I do that, it's not because of a bad thing. It's because when I think about your journey and the struggle with language and the fact that at one time you were entertaining people not because of what you were saying but more about how you were saying uh, and then look at you now you went and studied at Oxford and people who don't know Oxford Oxford is not London it's outside London um, is that towards towards the north west right yes it's kind of not, yeah. um and, and that would that would be like you know cambridge and and oxford these are like the uh the hearts of english you know uh, london is not necessarily english because if you go up north to manchester then that's no longer english that's yorkshire english and that's where people say my mother and and you wonder am i in nigeria or am i in england um but you know yeah gladys you went from the struggling english speaker 
to the heart of English in the UK um, and you left a mark there. Uh, tell us briefly, how many girls were there in aeronautics engineering in your time and how many of them came from Africa? Mm. Now, the, 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 the way, that, you know, they, they say the higher you go, the, the, the higher the altitude, the lower the oxygen level. I think <laughs> from my experience, the number of women, I think it became uh, fewer and fewer, the higher the altitude, the higher the educational altitude. So yeah. at JQUAT, we were nine. We were still minority in gender. We were nine out of around 80 students when we started. And then when I went to the UK mm -hmm. in my lab, so I have to emphasize that it's it's not the entire. So there was the Department of Engineering Science. That's where my doctorate was in. And then there was my lab, which was uh, Oxford Thermofluids Institute, was, it was called. We, we were around 30 to 40 something. We were only, I think, three women. And I was the only one from, if I'm not wrong, the only one from an African institution, if I remember correctly. But for sure, I was the only black, uh, I was the only black woman in the lab for around three years until I got someone else who joined the lab and we were two. So yeah, it was a bit a bit lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, talking about lonely, how does it feel being up there? Uh, oxygen for sure is a bit uh, less <laughs> up here. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's amazing. I think I, when 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 I think I think the opportunities that I now have, even when I when when I was after my PhD and I was I was looking for. Um, and like many people, I think uh, it's never one route. Like you are always interested in a number of roads. And I, for me, uh, with, with a PhD in engineering and being a woman, I feel like in as much as there are challenges with it, but there are also opportunities because now it kind of opened up so many, so many career doors for me. So I have to say it's, it's nice here. But uh, in terms of just traveling through the journey when you are alone and when people don't understand your problems or your, your, the things that you care about, it can be lonely. Uh, but like when I look back now, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I've gone through the journey because it's given me more opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you, you being a motivator and doing exactly what you, you love doing as well. Uh, yeah. you have you have an NGO that you are actually uh, you know using to reach out to the girls and and the uh, students in high school to motivate them. Would you like to speak a little about that, and then we can jump on straight to the books? Yeah, absolutely. So the the organization that I'm running uh, with some of my friends, it's called Ilu, which you shine in Kalenjin. Uh, if you go to ilu.org, you will see it. Um, although we need to do some work on the website, but anyway, we, 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 we do, we, I think when I look back, most of the things that I do, like that organization for, 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 for instance, and also writing this book, I think I'm, most of the time I'm just taking myself back to when I was at that stage and things that I think helped me. So hearing stories of people who look like me, like young women, um, uh, more so say from our area. So if, whenever I met or I saw in the news uh, an excellent, brilliant, inspirational young woman, particularly from our area, I would identify and it would make it would make whatever dream that I was dreaming more real and more reachable. And so anyway, that's what I try to do with the organization to sell the stories that we have to say, I was here, I went to Lele Bay Primary School and then I went to this place. I was, I, I didn't have a very, very good marks, but I did one, two, three, and this is where I am. And, and I think you have what it takes. Don't underestimate um, the, like the environment can be, can be under-resourced, but you have a lot of opportunities and you, and, and you can maximize the opportunities that you have in that environment. So that was, um, that was the, the main reason uh, or the, the main agenda of the organization, selling our stories and empowering girls and, and, and women, and even boys. We, we go to boys school. We've gone to Kaplong Boys a couple of times. Uh, we've gone to, yeah, we, 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 we mostly motivate students and we are trying to help them unleash, I like to say, unleash their potential. And we are yeah. also designing a, an exchange program now, something that I'm really passionate about and excited, looking forward to it. Uh, but anyway, more details on that later, but that's, that's mm -hmm. all about the organization. Yeah, super. Thanks a lot, Gladys. I mean, I would have asked the question, where, where do parents come in, in, in your nurture? So when you, when you look at your journey, 
Um, at what point do you think, you know what, this is what my parents contributed to my being here? Um, because I think this is a bit of what we are going to, you know, I keep talking with Ross, one of our, our panelists on the other program, um, th that we shouldn't be absentee parents. We need to be present in our children's lives. Um, I don't know if you think about Mr. Ngetich and Mrs. Ngetich, uh, what would you say about their role in, in bringing you up to the level that you then decided you wanted to be an engineer and, you know, how much of their energy is still pushing you out there? Mm, I, everything. I'll say everything. I, I'm here because of them. And, and, and mostly because, uh, so my, my dad, my dad worked away from home for, for, for a long time. And my mom was the person running the homestead for, 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 a, for a long time. And I want to say, um, so my parents carrying, especially when I was young, when you are in primary school and when you are in high school, you don't know what life is. And most of the time, and at least from my experience, I was going to school because Monday to Friday, people go to school. But in terms of, uh, and I was struggling and I, I, was, I, was, I was working hard to, to score an A or to be number one, just because I, I, was, I was naturally competitive and I wanted to be number one. But in terms of where those grades or that knowledge or that education would take me, I had no idea. And I was just going, going, to, taking life or going on in life just, just because everyone is doing or because my parents say so. Um, so I have to say, um, uh, so, so, for, so you ask the role of, of parents in, um, in bringing up uh, or supporting the kids. So I, I remember even with 45% in English, and I feel like sometimes as a, as a child, you then underestimate your potential because all of a sudden uh, someone got an A and you have a C and then you feel you feel stupid and i think uh, so, so many of those times i remember um, when when my mom would, would see my transcript and she would be like you know you just got this because you 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 guys were taught in kikale in in primary if you do this and this if you get more books if you ask the teachers to help you you can actually get an a and then i actually believe in her because you know the she the, the face is confident and she actually believes that you can improve they believe in you and then i go back to school i do one two three i go back home and it's improved and she's like you see i told you and i think that belief um that 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 uh Tr like you trust um and the kid can see like the child can see that you actually trust in them uh, instead of saying yeah i knew it you have a d i knew it i knew you were a d material like you will just be killing that child so anyway for me yeah. when i look back even with 298 marks my mom will be like you know you actually have 298 marks but I have, I have a feeling that if you get to these nice mission schools you can improve and then uh, at the end of form two she'd be like you see i told you and for me i was like oh okay at least you knew it and then i was just kind of following that dream um, and so in terms of what parents uh, the contribution uh, of parents, at least from my example i know some kids are self-driven and they are self-driven even in high school but for me i wasn't i was i did not know i was hated and I was mostly following my parents' um, guidance. And I'm really thankful for them because I'm here because of them. So right now, I'm now driven and I now appreciate the importance of education. And I know, I know what I want to do next and I can kind of drive myself. But up to here or up to undergrad or even after undergrad, yeah, it was mostly their motivation and their fuel that kind of carried me through. Uh -huh. <laughs> special Njomo Kenyatta for Oxford, straight from a bachelor's degree to a PhD, and then from PhD to a postdoc. I may take a talk briefly, uh, Dr. because you are a beneficiary of a very incredible scholarship scheme, which was started by somebody who worked for a very long time at Google, uh, Mr. Smith or Dr. Smith. 
uh, and, and you are one of the Smith scientists, so to speak. You know, the, one of the most prestigious uh, science uh, scholarships. But before we get there, did you call in Jim Murenoni? Nip Jinoi. Jeb Krugo Mew, Kiko Sergetabusia. Like in Jeb Krugo Togoso, Manikabusia, or Togoso Manibaro, no. Good eating a barwagi, Majisir, is a bar wet. My name, I like you, Gomway. And I'm not my joke. Say so many bar what? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Like in the barrel, not as serious with you. It does serious with you. Yes, yes. No, again, the headline is sour. I gave it straight to the point. I gave us straight to the point. Metanga like a table of the Gale, Une or Lava America, Roboni, Major Picolga, America, O Une or Lava London, meet the two Gagilu Jego, Cagalage in one beat, Jego, and Gulata. Straight to the point, Cosoma and Egypt, she has no time for nonsense. Or not a Gamaja Gabeoto. Dactari, you are a beneficiary after your PhD of yes. a postdoc fellowship to study at one of the world's leading. Uh, engineering institutions. Tell us briefly about that and then we go to your book straight away. All right, yes, I'm happy to talk about that. So the, the, the fellowship, uh, I'm at the scholarship, we gave her a Schmidt Science Fellowship and it was started by Eric Schmidt, who was a CEO of Google for, for some time. Um, so the, for, for anyone who is, who is doing their PhDs and they are, they are doing STEM PhD, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or, or fields related to STEM, and you are in your final year of PhD, you can actually qualify. And so you just go to Schmidt Science Fellowship and look for, um, and then apply. Actually, application, I think, is happening right now. And the only and, and Smith, only... just for people to yes. understand, Smith is S M. I T H S S C H M I D D T. Oh, he's a German. G he's German, a German, maybe he's, yeah. I think he's probably Jewish. Yeah, G Schmidt Fellow yeah. Science, Schmidt Science Fellowship. Yes. I so, will, I will, mm -hmm. um, I will write it in the comments. Yes, Go please. On. Yeah, so for anyone doing their for anyone for, for anyone doing the, the PhD and they are in final year, you can qualify. The only catch is they, they ask you to try to research something outside your PhD area. But I think for, for most PhD people, by the end of your PhD, you are yearning to learn something different. Now uh, it could be totally different from your field, uh, as in you move from aerospace uh, to maybe computer science or vice versa or biology to chemistry, or it could be something slightly different. Like in my case, I, uh, my PhD was in aerospace and my postdoc right now, which is postdoctoral research, still in aerospace, but it's different fields. So it doesn't have to be, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I was just trying to say about Schmidt Science Fellowship. If you are in final year of PhD and you, your PhD is in STEM, you, you can qualify. So just go there and check. Um, so my, my, like I mentioned, my PhD was, um, in aerospace engineering, and I was looking at uh, better ways of cooling aircraft engine. There is a component in an aircraft engine that gets hot, and I was looking at some technique of cooling it continuously when the when the when when the aircraft is flying. And then at the end of my PhD, I, I wanted to try something different, and then I ended up now researching um, fuels, uh, satellite fuels. And, and I think we all have an idea of what a satellite is. And I like giving examples that we all know, which is uh, GPS, for instance, that is helping you navigate ge geographically. That is happening. So you are able to navigate, you're able to use Google Maps because of a satellite seated somewhere in orbit and giving you those directions. But now for that satellite to go there and to be to, for, for it to maintain orbit occasionally when it loses track, it needs propulsion. So I'm looking at uh, fuels for those satellites right now. Um, yeah, I think that's what you wanted to know, Doctor. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Let's let's run through a few comments because definitely we are going into the book, and I do know we, we have a very very interactive forum, very active people. I really love our our audience. Yeah, um, I love your audience too. <laughs> I'm here with I'm here with uh, Dr. Gladys Chipkruing at it. Please 
if you have a copy of the other book, because we'd like to show it as well, and then we come to this, it would be great that we have the two books side by side. If you don't, we can just go to Amazon and show them uh, together. I just want to run through the comments. Um, Amon Kipkimeli, he just had his PhD here in Bremen, and he's back to Mombasa, uh, working at the Marine uh, University in Mombasa. He's just said, uh, Jambo Jambo. Emmanuel Kiplimomeli said, Kujame Garab Jason. Uh, Iga Mama. Oh, okay. Wilson Mayo, thank you very much. He says, Congratulations, Jambo Jambo. Ronald Kiplagat Morogo. Chiri Brenda is in Maldives. Uh, you know, a great friend of mine and and La Queta Boren, you can do. Hey, my brother, it's been long. It is true. I miss you guys a lot. Festas Bet, congratulations. I know that. This must keep it. Jambo Jambo. Pasuben Henry, Gongoy missing. Pasuben Henry was actually the guy who helped me with the design of some of those logos. He's doing a fantastic job there. He says it's amazing. And then I have read from Isaac. Kipchoge, Gemuna Mai Genyo, Pelinjai. We are not talking about politics here. Uh, Kenneth Boyd, Chamge Borurietak, our sister, congrats and keep up the good work. Paroswag Chirchir Francis Talam is a curator. He is the curator of Kwetalel Samoe um, um, Museum in Andy Hills. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I'm highlighted uh, by the way, Gladys, because I see you frozen there. But if, oh, if am want... I? I? I can hear you. you. But you can see me who is now yes. being seen? Ah, okay, yes, I, I don't know why. Yes. But, but it's good. Um, Professor Chepto Ruta also, Francis says Chebomuren uh, Bongelem, he got engineer Daktari, Oye Matia Nigoni, Abuati Alengaliot Kotagonigai, Nigoni Goju, Taputani Goniganagine, Kuin Titanaburu Teta, Gerge, Teta Nigo Bergladis, Gamele Raisi. Chepto Ruta. Professor from Moi University says, congratulations to engineer Dr. Gladys. Kongoi Bamuru, Kongoi Agni Bamuru Tanyu. Kemboy Ezra says, Igatua Jepkirui Daktari. Youngster says, following live in Doha. Robert Onui, I'm watching you in Tagit. Sakem Rotich, following from Nairobi. Caroline Tarus, great work, uh, uh, guys. Following from Eldred. Alex Kemutaya Chokimao Mulolongo, watching you live. Robert Tonui watching from home, Giptagi Jagasom. And Jared, Jared is in the UK. I'm not sure you've met him. Uh, Jared says, uh, Jambo Jambo, I'm happy to be watching the session. I'm here to learn and definitely proud of her as a sister and a mentor to my young generation. Asante to Daktari for the program. Jared is in Bristol in the UK. And he says he works somewhere very close to Oxford. So he's actually sometimes, uh, he follows in your steps. Um, Isaac from Mulingruan, he says he appreciates the recognition. A lot of the girls from Kureso and Akuru, Kureso South and Akuru County at large actually get inspiration from you, Daktari. Gongoi missing, Dr. Gongoi Robert Diego, I've seen your message, Patroba, great work. Job Mapesa, my friend, who also had his PhD here. Liki Sara Jebo Rory, you're watching. Well done, my lady. Welcome, my lady. Eric Maraba, quite encouraging. Um, okay, fantastic. Alain Emmanuel, don't waste time. Let's go straight. We want to know how to, how to pursue masters and PhD. Langat Sim Sim says, wonderful. It's encouraging. Um, congratulations for the epic story, Gladys. Cheptoru, the professor, is saying it. Jonathan, congrats, our daughter. You are a motivator. Joel Chepkwon, um, this is uh, he is a pilot, a retired pilot, was in the army. This is great. Jared Mugun says he actually uh, fortunate to be working some contract at Kid Kidlington. Kidlington is about. Uh, Oxford, and I think I'm about to walk in the steps of Dr. Gladys Chepkruing at it. My regards to you and her for today's session. Faith, do you know that Faith also comes from your your area? Yes, yes I'm she, so proud of her. 
Yes, and Isaac says, please get in touch with her that you, you both inspire. Douglas Mutungwa, this is a great, great, great uh, fan of this program. Uh, says it's a beautiful story. Eli Bete, hey, Jason. Apo umewakalisha po, Jael, kama wewe. Kago, Nognio Smith, Enoch Langat, great. Marius, wow, I'm at the right for my dear aeronautics engineering too, currently at, at Wilson Airport. Mm. See, engineers are flocking in. Elizabeth Ruto says, only serious letters with meaningful headlines, no small talk about the weather. Love that part. Ayyo, katamena guwe murenju. Jackie, congrats to her. Kim, good job, our sister. Robert, nice presentation. Both our doctors are Bill and Gladys. Keep up moving forward. Marvel Jeruta, good work, Dr. Gladys, following you closely. Receive greetings from Mercy Rono, your high school mate. Wow. See? Jeru, your team on watching from Jevarbar. Thanks for the session. Let's leave it there. I will I will come back, guys. So Gladys, you've gone all the way to MIT, you know, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, right? Is that the place? Yes. Uh, you know, people just hear this uh, in the news. Now, you have written books. You and, and an incredible Dr. Ngetic, who is also an Oxfordian. Uh, you've written the first book. I don't know if you have a copy or if you don't, or you want to mention something about that book, and then we can go to today's topic. Oh, I, I, we can. I have a physical copy, but I have to move somewhere to get okay, it. Okay, as I speak, you go and pick that. I read the. I read the comments unless it's taking okay, time. Yes, no, but no. I read the comments as minute. you go. It's one minute. Just, just pick it. Um, Jafet Kemutai Ruto for her sky is not the limit. Of course, it's not the limit. She walks in the sky. Joffrey Ngeti, this is an incredible job. Daktari Jeruyot Cleophas, Kongoi professor, following the show from my base in. Me they were getting in here in Germany. Dan Kangogo was a student at Wageningen. and he's now in uh, he's based in the uh, in in Thailand. Um, he's based in Thailand. Um, Kazim Zuri Sana, and then Ben Kosge says, "My sister Kende watching from Alabama, USA." Kongoi me sing. Uh, I don't think Gladys is Kendek, by the way. Kati Mwao? Oh, Mwao Mwao Gautua. Mwao Mwao Bakin, you just have to be like a Kendek, I will get the other end of the level. Oh, I know. In Ki Olegi Sikwango Gap, Gap Chip, Talame, I think you couldn't Gap Chip Lil sometimes. Yes. Ki Nue Gibor Rek. Ki Nue Nguna Wagilene. Ki Oreta, my mum. Okay. my dad ko 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 ka chapter la me ka nga chiblil. Yes. Aya ko na baso mo ko ko ma barwa nga. Ko barwa nga. Mureju. Mureju oru yenye ko roto ji maga stoy. Barwa ti ngai barwa tara ga osiru a get line check li a get lane ko a kende ka go ka ger ko maya jen nga le ka chapter la me. Sibing ke itu nya ge sir barwa nam patatu. Ke sir kitabu nam patri. Dagtari, Jambi got in a bad yaming ag for more communion of me grijois. Meet an e, meet Cheboin, Cheboin, your boss sent a given a sent a yacht on Cheboin in Litain in Kerecho County. My grandfather, Con Nelson Coetch. I think picture you about that area going in Nelson Coetch, but Kimen was born, yes. Very good, very good. So you have written. A first book with another doctor, uh, a medical doctor, Dr. Ngetich. No relation to you, so the letters can still come. Yeah. And then, what is the title of the book? And if you could show us. Mm. Ma, so man, the Bold so Dream, Transcending yeah. the Impossible, by Dr. Gladys Chepkrui Langat, PhD, and Dr. Alicia Kipkemoy Ngetich. Oh, no, no, Dr. Gladys Chepkirui Ngetich, PhD, yes. at Dr. Elisha Kemoy Ngetich, MD. Yes. 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 And, and this is a book about your lives, your life yes. story. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. summary okay. school these are the lessons that I learned. This is how I applied for the scholarship. So we went into details in the row. And then the good thing about this, it's, it's uh, my story and then plus uh, Elisha's story as well. Yes, and you interchange. You say his story and then your story, his story and your story. Yes. And I have my Kindle copy, by the way, of that. Thanks for getting it. Yes. yes. And then you launched it here. You have to mention. Yes, you launched it right here. On, and your on, on audience were amazing. I think the first the first couple of sales that we made, actually, they originated from that book launch. So thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And now you have this book, which is targeted at a particular audience, people who are interested in going for a PhD. Mm. What is the book? Mm. So go don't care, but let me uh, allow me to mention that yes. I actually I think this is really suited. It's suited for anyone because I guess someone my story and uh, Dr. Alicia's story, uh, but mostly I think high school and campus. Um, if you have if you have a student in uh, meeting um, secondary school, I think they really enjoy and they'll get motivated by this book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I have some copies in Kenya. So she then meet in Kenya. Uh, Amazon. I think you can get it from Amazon very easily. But mm-hmm. you, we will give the number. So go to go knock the number. You can mm-hmm. text me and you can get this one um, at a subsidized price of less than one thousand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very good. Okay, Super. now we can transition. We can transition. So you have written a book which is targeted at uh, at people who want to go for a PhD. Yes. And there is something which very which is very interesting about the uh, the cover. Uh huh. Explain you like the title the and then tell us why the choice of that cover. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about it. I think this is what brought us here today. <laughs> yes. So the journey the PhD journey, and I think Yes. Yes. Yeah, so this is, I have one copy here with me. Let me remove uh, this. Mm-hmm. So this is, uh, this is the PhD journey, the book that we are launching. Yeah, uh, if you push it slightly on, the, on, on your left. Slightly on your left. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. We want to see your face on the, on the, just put it on your shoulder. Yeah, that, that's great. And the book okay. is called The PhD Journey. Yes. Uh, strategies for enrolling for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD uh, program. Yes. Right. And then yes. you have a lot of you have a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of artistic things there that were drawn. And Would can you see to, what is to, written to get there? That. Yes. Can now you see it's very is, clear. So yeah. can you see what's written on the mesh inside the mesh? The white uh, thing. Push it slightly out. It's no, no, no. Unless so, I read my copy. But yes, you can read it is, for us. Because there is this mesh and then there is this uh, r- something written here. Yes. Which says, which says you are here. So for, for anyone trying to enroll or you yes. are in a PhD journey, you, I actually don't have to explain this mesh. I think you understand how you feel. It's a constant roller coaster. You, f- yeah. you feel excited about it. And then the following day, you don't like it. And then yeah. it's a constant thing like that until the end. And I'm saying from my experience, one or two, two or three things that I did intentionally and some almost by mistake, but I think they really helped me. These are the things I'm now offering and I'm hoping it will kind of um, fish you out of the net. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the thinking behind the, the cover. And I think, I, I don't know what you think, uh, Dr. Tari, uh, when you were doing your PhD, did you feel like constantly confused? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it depends uh, because yeah. if... I, I was I was too old, okay, and and I wanted to get done with it. Yeah. So somehow, uh, because I mean, you look at the time I took. Instead of four years, I was through in uh, in 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 thirty something, about thirty months. So wow, that's it, exceptional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was it I think for was me it, it is slightly it different. Me? I was old, and I was I wanted to get through with it because you know I had a family back in Kenya. And ah. I was in the middle of nowhere in China. Yeah. Um, I think people have heard it sometimes. One day when I get the courage, I will also write a book, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but you but know what? I, I, share, I share what you are saying. Yes. I think at some point you are, you are in that kind of, in the middle of nowhere. You are, you are, yes. you are drained. You have a lot of data. You yes. want to organize it into a thesis. You don't know where to begin. You don't know where to begin. 
or sometimes when you know even where to begin you don't know what you you are yeah you don't know you don't know if it's helping the world even after yeah. you said the thing you still yeah, you're still yeah, doubting yeah. yeah but i don't know whether you cover it in the book because there you talk about strategies and by definition uh, the real nice definition about the strategy is the knowing what to do and knowing what not to do it's yeah. like you are drawing you are drawing a a line you are saying yes. this is where i want to go yes. i will not go left i will not go right but this yeah. is where i want to go yes um how does one get there how does one get to a point where they know where they want to go it's not easy and and i think sometimes you never get there i don't think you 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 will nail 100% but i'm hoping when people read through my stories and and strategies that i personally used i'm hoping that at least some of the mistakes that i made i'm hoping that they don't repeat it because i feel like because i did not have i did not have so many people in my circle who were doing phd by the time i was starting my phd when i was 25 years old i got admission when i was 24 years old and i think you know in kenya it's very it's very rare to find uh, uh, people under 30 doing phd's and so i didn't have so many people to copy or to teach me or to tell me how to do it and you know phd is a very unique thing and you had mentioned before it's very different from bachelors and also very different slightly different from masters because it's a long project and it's mostly your project and you are in charge of it uh, and so anyway i'm just trying to say like through the strategies some things that i some mistakes and i and i, I was honest uh, with some of the mistakes that i made and, I, and I'm looking back now, I'm like, you know, that was actually a mistake or something that I should not have done. And if I was to go back, I would do it differently. And one and one that is on top of the list of things that I would do differently is um, when you start a PhD, especially in these elite institutions, you tend to doubt yourself because that's why you are coming from some institution somewhere in Africa. And then uh, because just the fact that you don't know what reference manager is, I do not know what reference manager is. So not just the way we write our assignments up, uh, to look at the assignments here too, and then plagiarism tupu, and then uko chini too neka some references. Others in Guinea you've never seen that book, but your friend Ali Andika unandika pia. All of a sudden now it, everything has to be legit, and I don't know how people are organizing these things. Uh, Zitero, Mendley, whatever. So anyway, I'm just trying to say. Uh, when you come from such place you doubt yourself and you're like oh my god i'm really stupid what am i doing here and i doubted myself for a very long time now when i look back i wish i i wish i wish someone told me that you will catch up i only needed them at one year or less than one year and i was at i was where everyone else was and we graduated around three and a half four years later all of us and we are doing well right so when i go back now i, I wish someone told me chill you are okay you have what it takes like you have the brain mm -hmm. you have the brain and you have the grit or the persistence or the patience what you need is just time and just don't beat yourself just believe in yourself and you will catch up so anyway that's one thing that i wish someone told me and now i'm, I'm telling someone through the book that um the fact that you got that admission it's not by mistake they they see they saw your potential um and they they, they see what you can offer just believe in yourself and work work on it and it's just a matter of time you catch up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and gladys why did you write the book mm. I, I I've, <laughs> I've already given you i've already given you one answer. i think you and did like, yes yes that's one answer uh looking back and saying you know the gladys of 2014 i i got an admission and i want to tell you doctor i don't know if, if i mentioned last time uh i actually wanted to turn it down so I had gotten the scholarship and I've gotten admission to Oxford. And at some point, and, and some of my friends were asking me, so Gladys, you're going to Oxford, like Oxford Moja, yeah, UK. Like, akuna, I think some people thought, kuna, you know, just the way when I say, when I Juja, main campus, and then kuna Jaikwat, maybe Nakuru campus. And sometimes like the level of Riga or some courses are equal in the small campus, equal kwa main campus. And I think some of my friends are going to figure out Oxford Econa campuses, and they were thinking I was going to the campus, not the Oxford, the ones that they the one that they produce uh, Oxford Dictionary, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, so things like those, and I was like, by the way, I'm, I'm not biting too much. Uh, will I be able to chew uh, this food that I'm biting? Um, and then so, some so, some of my friends are going to Lisa, and it's a legit question. I'm going to find a PhD in aerospace engineering, and then and then we up a and after me, I was like, uh, that's a very good question. Where will I get a job? You know, all those things. Um, 
So when I look back now, uh, when I look when I look back uh, after Melissa PhD, and you you'd mention a very amazing a very amazing point. Uluko mesema something about um, the fact that I mean PhD is had in the challenging and long, but it's not out of the world. It's something that you can definitely handle if you want to do research. You are curious and and you and you and you have grit in you, patience and persistence. So the reason why I wrote the book was just because of that. Uh, Nikiwa mm -hmm. Oxford, most of, I think I was one of the oldest in my cohort. People were really young, 22 years, 23 years. Well, I mean, my two bachelors and straight to PhD. And it's not a big deal. I think for people who are doing PhDs abroad, you understand this. Like people do PhDs really young, particularly in the UK. Let me talk about the UK. Uh, and then now uh, when I mentioned, when I mentioned every time in the UK, it was not a big deal. In fact, I was older than my cohort mates. But every time Nikikuja Kenya, wow, PhD, and you are 27, you are 28. So for me, I'm like, you know, I'm actually older in my cohort, Tukirudu uh, Uko Uko Oxford. So anyway, I was just trying, was just trying to write, um, yeah. write to, just to say it's something manageable. It's something something that you can handle. If you want to do a PhD, don't be scared to do it. Uh, so that's, that's it. And then obviously, tips and strategies and hoping that you don't make mistakes that I made. So that was the entire reason why I, I wanted to share my stories for someone else yeah, to learn. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it is, as you say, it's, it's about learning from others. So there is, there is your experience, the one that yes. you've gone through. Yes. There are lessons you've drawn out of that. Yes. There are mistakes you made. There are, there are things you got right. And then when you put all those together, you yes. build you build a wealth of experience that somebody else could benefit to avoid the pitfalls that you probably went through, yes. although you survived. Yes. And, and they would possibly help them to go faster than you did. Absolutely. Um, faster and smoother. Yes, faster and smoother. That is, that's really amazing. Um, Emmanuel, I, I got your message. Thanks. Kele Giropracta and Physio Pain Relief Center. Uh, Dr. Ma Tahir, my letter is coming. Yes, I need no. Just write one letter. Don't write letters to to many people. Uh, and to, to whom it may concern. <laughs> yeah, go to whom it may concern. Go in. No, no, no. This will not go anywhere. You know, give me take in a good targeted targeted um, hunting. Uh, I would I would as you had. The sky is not the limit, the sky is her, her laboratory. So, um, Daktari, uh, Carol Jepsiro says, Congratulations, following your steps, girl, getting my master soon. I love for your PhD in Akujia. Well done. Carol, get the book. Yes. You need you need the book. Kati Mudama is watching you from Saudi Arabia. Cornelia Seremi is saying he's enjoying the show. Where can I get the book here in Kericho? I guess we are going to give out yes. the contact for, yes. for buying. Yes. Edwin Jemiron is actually a son of a, a scholar from Nandi Hills. Um, this is good. I started my PhD, but along the way, I somehow got lost. The insights from Gladys are really encouraging me. Thank you. Edwin Jem Jemiron at Lodua. Ramathan Gibet Moha, great. I met her two weeks ago. Somebody met you two weeks mm. ago. Yes, yes. Kilometer, uh, you are an inspiration to many young people, both male and female. Uh, congrats, Cheptonyo. Keep scaling the heights. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. D Daktari, yes. how much effort went into planning and writing? A lot. Did you get to a point where you thought, you know what, this is not going to be a book? Yes. In, <laughs> fact, I, in fact, I write about it. Uh, I don't, do you have your copy, Daktari? Not yet. Oh, we will. Plan. I was going to take advantage of your. I, your we your... Will plan for you to have a copy. So yes. the, the, reason, the reason I'm saying is because somewhere, I don't miss out which page, but mm -hmm. somewhere I, I was confessing that um, one of the tips that I was giving, the reason mm -hmm. why I'm bringing this up is. One of the tips that I was giving for PhD students, and I think people understand, even who are masters, when mm -hmm. you're doing a very big project, you get paralyzed because sometimes when I say, you don't know, how, you do, you, it's kind of um, um, an elephant kwa sahani, and you mm -hmm. are told it's your elephant and, and you are overwhelmed. You don't know where to begin because it's a massive thing. 
So yes. anyway, one of the tips, I'm one of the strategies yeah, to survive or to thrive during your project ni, ni, um, quitting, quitting uh, perfectionism and just starting. Mm -hmm. uh, just start, just start somewhere. Wanasema at inspiration is perishable. So mm -hmm. ukikuwa na inspiration leo ukilala kesho inapotea. So and that's exactly what happened uh, what happened uh, when I was writing the book. Occasionally kuna siku literally ningeka from sanane hadi maybe 6 ama 7 nikipata tu ideas are coming and I'm just typing ideas are coming and I'm typing. But kuna some days some weeks even um, I think kuna siku one month full month imeenda before I even opened my manuscript because the motivation na haikuwa uh, so what I'm just trying to say is, and I think you are asking a very good question. Oh, uh, were there times in I was like, you know what? Uh, let me just let me just write this as a blog. In fact, at some point I was like, let me just write this as a big PDF. What to do? Was show me some tips. And then, um, as they say, you you yeah, one one step at a time. And and before you know it, you are making the million uh, or you are building a mountain by carrying one stone at a time and that's what happened yeah so it's i think it's challenging and i have to say the thing that made me go through or manage writing process uh, and like i mentioned the corner 45 percent in english so sometimes even i i i i, I when i feel like i cringe what we can eat an author or when i call myself an author but uh, I think it's just that you have a dream, you have a bold dream, and then you just persist and you carry one stone at a time and you don't stop. And before you know it, you have a mountain and someone else doesn't have a mountain because they, they didn't persist in carrying the stone kind of mm -hmm. thing. So anyway, it was, it was, I think it was, uh, it was long. Um, and I learned a lot of lessons from my PhD in terms of persisting and carrying that one stone at a time until you have your, your mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Daktari, people are asking where can we buy? Let's talk about the buying because I think it's it's going to be fair to them. And you wanted to share yes. two things. You wanted to share the uh, you wanted to share the book on Amazon as it looks. Yes. And then you can share the tip about the uh, the, the the discount, the massive discount you're offering on two fronts. So one yes. for the digital version, which people get straight now, and then the other one where you can basically be contacted. Go ahead, if you want to share your screen and then you can talk us through. Awesome. Let me, let me, let me share the Amazon one. So for anyone who can shop from Amazon, I would recommend that you shop from Amazon because it will be instant. And before you sleep Leo, or before you be in the next one now, you could be reading this book. So let me start from there. So on Amazon, I'm giving 50% discount. Uh, you can see here um, on Amazon, you just go to just just type the PhD journey, you can add my name or you can type the entire thing, the PhD journey strategies for enrolling and uh, thriving and excelling in a PhD program. And then uh, go Daktari, to Daktari, yes. just, just just an FYI, because what I did as well when I was going there is sometimes it is too long. Just type there. If you go up, go up now and then and then you you see under search there. So this yes. is Amazon.com, and then if you if you type there Gladys Chepkrui, okay, it, it takes you somewhere. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you press enter, there. you see the two books coming up straight on. Ah, absolutely. There absolutely. you are, right? Yes. Yes. And then I think you need to accept the cookies. That's why it is blacked out. Uh -huh. Ah. Yeah. Yes. And then there you are. So you know, if you start from Amazon, go to. Um, go to search and then you can search with her name and you can see there Gladys and and down here there is Gladys and then the Kindle now you can go ahead yes so there is actually uh, so oh, let, let me start with Kindle so Kindle is seven nine nine dollars which is like eight dollars so I'm giving 50 percent discount for Kindle which you can just get it now actually and deliver to your Kindle device and you can start reading it uh, at 3.99 and then in addition to actually i just realized that amazon is also doing their their promotion uh, the book is originally 19 dollars. i think you can see uh, as you can see here i think you could see here uh 19.95 dollars but they are doing their own promotion so you can still get uh the paperback at 15 dollars uh I, I don't know when it's when it when this their promotion is expiring uh, so those are two things to note. And I have to mention that for uh, the 50% discount that we are giving for ebook uh, is only uh, is a few hours. So make sure in the next in the next five or so hours 
um, you do that because the price will go back to 7.99. So maybe now or immediately after this session, make sure you get you take advantage of that before it goes back to 7.99. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, I think we have some number that that you can share yes, for people in yes. Kenya. You can type Kenya it up there. If you can, okay. you can type it under search and then it is uh, visible. All right, uh, let me stop share and then share um, a, a Google doc. Or you want me to, yeah, go, go. And then you can see, bad or two, you can read it later, but, mm. uh, but for now, let me just share um let me let me write it let me share let me share and write it here yeah uh one moment where did this go share let me share this google docs just so you guys can yeah. see yeah. so uh you can write it to let me i'll actually add i'll make it big so you can mm -hmm. see so write to, this is my kenyan number 07 and i'm currently in nairobi so i should be yeah. able to see your messages 0797 uh 417700 mm -hmm. this is my number so i want you to write a uh, full name mm -hmm. um uh yeah full name and then and and then uh mention mention that you are you are you were in this session so mm -hmm. that you get the discount. So what I have here, uh, physical books, several several of them. Uh, what is what is the name of this station? That, somebody uh, is already somebody is already somebody is already uh, calling. So you guys, uh, chillax, chillax, chillax. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> or maybe the letters are streaming in. Who knows? Maybe the hey guys, don't use this for the letter. Yes, please. This is, this is for the book. Yeah, this is for the book. You need to yes. say that you are on corporate and then you get 50% <laughs> of the discount. Yes. Um, so, uh, yes, yes, just mention mention your full name. Give me your full name. Yes. You can write it now or immediately after this. Just write yeah. Uh, yeah. to this number. Yeah. Write your full name and then mention that you you are right. You 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 got you were in this session, corporate app Jason. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, I will call you tomorrow, I promise. So and just possibly the your, address. If they can give you the address, that might cut down on the callbacks as well. Uh, no, I, it's all right. I, I I'll call back and then we'll organize how I can deliver the physical book. So that's you, okay. You know, I wanted to read. I wanted to read the letters before you. Now it looks oh. like the call, the call, the call will take the letter. But it's it's good. It's good. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, all right. That is well noted. Yeah. So, so you, uh, you, you know, they can write an SMS. They can write a WhatsApp. Yeah, write message. an SMS, please yeah and yes if you could put the uh, the price of the two books there the e -book. oh yes yes so this one uh let me say these are this is i'll say this is a physical book uh the mm -hmm. P actually i have i have both of them so let's yes. start with the phd journey yeah um so this is the phd journey i'll make it a uh, big and you are discounting that to 1200. And I'm discounting. So the price for this one is um, Kenya shillings, sorry. Mm -hmm. Kenya shillings, 1200 yes. from $19. So if you are in Kenya, it's actually a better deal. Yeah. Um, Courtesy of Coquit. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you. Thank you for making that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, let's the same thing. And then this is the other one is the bold dream yeah the bold dream uh is going at uh this one is going at 800 yeah yes okay and you you have you have only the uh the hard copies for that but people can also buy it on amazon i think i bought it on amazon for 11 dollars or something i can't remember it should be even less now yes yeah yeah yes okay very good um, yes. so I think you answered the question for um, who was the guy. There was Cornelia Serem. I think he was the one who was asking about where do I buy? Yes. In Kericho. And there yeah, you, just write you, me a you sort of um, you sort of answered. Yes. I need to invite you to Kalenjins Abroad. Faith Miner has a forum okay. uh, called Kalenjins Abroad. With, yes. I think around about 40,000 followers now. Wow. It would be great. Uh, Faith, get in touch with, with me or you can just inbox uh, Gladys let's get this message to as many people as possible that would be super good um, yes, faith Kipchumba Tanui good job Gladys following you from Nairobi Mulachake um, is Lee 
Cheruyot was asking whether it is on Amazon. I hope you got it now. Cheruyot is on, uh, is here in Göttingen. Ellen Gerono is saying you are inspiring. I have a daughter who wants to do aeronautics engineering. I need her page for more encouragement. Helen from Nakuru. Oh, yes. Um, uh, let me share that as well as you continue reading. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is my page. I'll yeah. just copy. Just look for, um, uh, I'll write it, I'll write it here. Yes. Just look for uh, www.gladyschepkirui.com and you yes. can actually, you can contact me from there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, from the contact form there in the, in the, in the website. Yes. Yes. Very good. And Chepkru is uh, with a CH. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. How about looking for work before proceeding for a master's, uh, Gladys? What do you think about that? This is from Douglas. Rain Victor says, good job. And then there is Teruyot Mike. My neighbor says, uh, Tuko Pamoja professor, say hi to our own Dr. Gladys. Edna Mosonik, Magasegutitis. No, get what you would eat, Gladys. Who knows? I was a good eat, Edna. I'm calling any of them. I'll have a mug of me, it's all glad you gave me a good eat. I get a shig English. Go be Kiras a German, a Muja Kalakwell German, go be Kiras a Chinese, a Muja Kalakwell Chinese, learning maturity, Kijot and Guna, get a good eat, that's why they are English, who not have known them nay. Yes. Um, Congo missing. Um, Gladys. Yes. Imagine so much an excerpt from this book. Is there a part that you think this is something I need to read to somebody? If you could read a paragraph or two for us, that would be great. You can leave this as uh, as it is. Yes. And then you can go on and read. Yeah. Okay, Doctor Gole, now saw me two things in your Thomas so on the excerpt. Yes. Uh, I wanted to. I forgot to say. Please let me. I'll write it here so you guys don't don't forget. Mm -hmm. Please write me a review, review on, on Amazon. Amazon. I'll, I'll really appreciate. Yeah. So after you read it, mm -hmm. whatever you think about the book, Kamaili uh, Kuangalesha, just log in there and then leave a review. I'll really Very appreciate good. that. Yes. Very and then uh, someone asked about getting a job before the PhD. I actually mm -hmm. have to mention that in this book, the first chapter, let me read the first chapter. The name mm -hmm. of the first chapter is PhD now, later or never and in this kuna some of my friends are like we are not going to do that thing like seven years of my life and i'm 30 years now <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and it's a legit question so i i spend uh, i spend some time in the first chapter of this book interviewing interviewing some of my friends when you are a phd is not for them and then some of them when you are a phd for me it's not it's not something i'm considering right now because I have a young family, I have to work and invest, and then I'll think about PhD. So I think or, when, or I don't have a husband. Somebody else says, you know, I have to get a husband before I go yes. for a PhD. Yes, yes, yes. So the, but, those stories, I interviewed one, two, three, four, five, six of my friends, uh, three or four of my friends when you are Liandika Waliniambia why. So they talk something about a professional or career goals. Because for them, when I say my, for them, experience in the industry is more important than academia and PhD. Kuna mungina alikuwa na sema a family, alikuwa na young family, na they did not want to go away from the young family. Kuna moja alikuwa na sema they were not sure about the project they wanted to spend seven, five years of their life researching, and they are still exploring while they do masters and work. Uh, so anyway, just for someone when you lose a doctorate about uh, doing a job or relax in Kwanzaa before doing a PhD, it's something that you can do. And I think you can you can learn or you can uh, get some comfort from some of these friends when you are Liamua, they will postpone their PhDs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the exact, I'm happy to read uh, one of the portions that I like the most. And it's, it's linked to what I had mentioned about inspiration being, uh, let me read it. Yeah. Um, so this one is on, when you get the book, uh, this one is on page uh, 71. And I was writing about some tips for the PhD journey. And one of the tips that, I, like I mentioned, um, if I was to go back, uh, one of the, on top of the list, I'll, I'll, I'll know that inspiration is perishable and I would not wait for, uh, for long before uh, using that inspiration. So let me read uh, on page 71. Uh, I will read, I'll read a short paragraph. Let me show, read a, a short paragraph. Um, so, 
Your PhD journey will force you to embrace imperfections. From experience, I can confidently tell you that you will not achieve perfection with your PhD. Always, always aim to give your best, aim to constantly improve, and aim for growth. Do your best research, write to the best level you can, and then force yourself to come to a full stop. Submit and defend your thesis. Because as you'll realize, there will be always something to be improved on, something that could be redesigned, a point of view or perspective that was missed. And it helps to remember that a PhD isn't a final product. Rather, it's a long and sometimes torturous, but overall, overall rewarding growth and learning process. To help you efficiently manage your PhD project, you could adopt the four-step project management style, which they call it plan, do, check, and act. Or some people call it act, learn, build, so you can act again. Uh, or try, fail, learn, try differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's yeah, sorry, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, if you went to university in Kenya, yeah, and with all due respect to my fellow dons at the university, yeah, we have a big, big problem in Kenya mm. that a professor likely creates the impression in a student mm. that he is the cleverest guy mm. and the student is the stupidest guy. Mm. And you get to a point where you think there is nothing for me to know because everything there was to know has been known by my professor. Mm. What would be your advice? Mm. And, and I say this because I have seen a lot of people who, like you, they started in engineering mm. and then they get to a point where they say, ooh, the guy who taught us, uh, I don't know, fluid mechanics made it very clear. There is nothing else to research. We know everything that is there to know. So I'm not going to waste my time in engineering anymore. I'm yeah. going to switch for a postgraduate diploma in education and go and become a math teacher in a high school. Yeah. Um, if you look at that vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, my seven years lecturing at the University of Munich mm, here mm. was never about, I am the most brilliant guy. You are the stupidest pack of students. And though you've come here to consume knowledge, mm -hmm. it was, I am, the, I am the, the guy who is going to provoke you because that's my business. My business is to, 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 to help you raise questions so that you are curious mm. rather than you saying oh there is nothing to know anymore because mm. everything there was to know has been known yeah what would you tell this phd guy who thinks damn it mm. i have been to university all this time i want to go for a phd but honestly i have no idea what i'm going to to research and and you know add that to the fact that the way we approach a PhD in Kenya is different from the way we approach the PhD research abroad. In Kenya, you possibly need to come with your own topic for a master's, for example. Mm -hmm. You have to have your master's topic, and then you write your you know, concept paper, and then you bring your topic, and then you, know, you are admitted and you run your research. Out here, sometimes you go to a a PhD program without your own topic because the topic belongs to the, the department. The department has a number of projects which are funded by industry and those projects are broken down into, into buckets of PhD uh, work. You know, any tip that you would give to somebody who is looking at their professor in Kenya and thinking, you know, there is nothing for me to go and research anymore? Mm. Um. I think I have, and I have to confess that I was there at some point as well. I think especially the first few months, uh, I was feeling like my, my supervisor, I used to feel that my supervisor knows everything. And so whatever they ask me to do, I'll just do and full stop. I wouldn't explore more. And I think, yes, I would still blame as well. Like you mentioned, I think I'll blame on our our, our educational curricular, our educational system where we are taught or conditioned that the teacher, I think CBC in Ezabadisha in Kidogo, but I think we were brought up to know or to condition that the teacher is, um, say, and then uh, we really, apart from the homework to Lipewa, we really explored outside. Um, 
uh, even just like reading for the sake of reading and expanding your 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 mind uh, it wasn't there for me so it's it's a new thing as well that i had to learn and i think yeah i had to learn really fast um, so just to say, just to say, if you don't know what you want to research and you want to do a PhD, I think, uh, yeah, you can start. I'm sure, I'm sure there is an interest. Uh, when I started my PhD, I did not know exactly the project that I wanted to do. I just knew there is this field of mechanical engineering that I was interested in. And then I, I talked with my professor and then he gave me a list of projects that were in that field. And I ended up choosing one that I, I did not know. I didn't have a full full idea of what it what it was about but i had a feeling that i might enjoy so i think phd because it's just long and sometimes you can't tell if you really like it but if you have 60 percent 70 percent desire or, or passion in some project i'll just say uh, where answer to uh, throw yourself in the swimming pool like i like to say you will be surprised how fast you learn and you will adapt very fast and before you know it you are you are floating so if, I think if you wait for hundred percent, if you wait for confidence and passion to load hundred percent before you start, you will never start. And I think it's anything in life, really. Uh, it's not only PhD, a business or whatever. You, you just you just look for sixty percent and then begin. The rest you feel as you continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I like working on something called the Pareto principle, the eighty twenty rule. Yeah. yeah. So if you you get you get twenty percent of the thing sometimes. That's yeah. enough uh, to carry the uh, the, the non functional eighty percent. Or you get the eighty percent that is working, mm. and and that sort of covers the uh, non functional twenty percent. And I think the Pareto principle almost applies everywhere. Yes. You get twenty percent of the people who work very hard are covering yeah. for some eighty percent who are very useless and they are not doing any productive work. So, yeah. in principle, what we are saying is, um, out here sometimes you you don't need. And a, a very good example I was discussing with a young guy who's just been admitted to University of Bayreuth in Germany. Mm. Um, when he was asking me about about his master, he he just got admitted on Wednesday uh, mm. this week. And, and I was telling him, Germany is not a place you will come and tell a professor, hey, I'd like to come and uh, research about avocado, because they will ask you, okay, so who will supervise you? Mm. Because if if the department has no active research on avocado, they are not going to deviate from their main focus to be able to accommodate you mm. um, in, in that case. And, and, you know, going back to what we said, uh, Dr. Tari, just to confirm, we were just joking before we went on air and we were saying a PhD is probably the easiest degree to do compared to a bachelor's. And with all due respect to all of us who have PhDs, when you go from high school to a bachelor's class, you're going from somewhere where you've been spoon fed to somewhere where rapidly people expect you to be on your feet. But in PhD, you are being con conditioned through bachelor's, through master's. By the time you get to a PhD, you're almost not going to be thrown there to swim with the sharks. Eh? You, you have a rough idea how, how life is, uh, is going to work. Yeah. Right. I, I have a question here. It's from Lawrence Keegan. He says, BSc in renewable energy and environmental physics. I advise this parent whose child has been called to pursue this course at JQAT. Is it worth doing it following from Nairobi Good Work? I think as you answer it, the typical Kenyan approach by parents yes. is exactly what people asked you. Yeah. Where will you find a job with yeah. this kind of a degree? And I was really scared. Yeah. So what would you advise, uh, Lawrence? <laughs> okay, two things, Lawrence. And, and um, I have to, uh, disclaimer is, um, I'm seeing all these just from my own experience and, and just the fact that I'm still young as well. Um, I'm, still, I'm still navigating this career thing, so I don't know 100%, but from my experience. So two things that I'll tell Lawrence. So renewable energy at JQuart, I'll say yes, because my sister pursued renewable energy at JQuart and she's doing well. She's, she's interning interning in a company, in a renewable energy company now here in Nairobi. And I think renewable energy is the future. Um, everyone is talking about renewable energy and going green and all that. Um, so that's number one. So I would say, I would say yes. Uh, and I, I think also depends if the student uh, wants to do that or if they want to do something different. And then number two, 
if they don't you know if they don't have if they don't get the job they can start the company i think that's something we don't appreciate enough as kenyans that if at some at some point no one is employing you you can start something and, and employ people al along the along the road especially with renewable energy i feel like uh, your the students can definitely uh start uh start start a, a renewable energy firm uh and, and and employ other people so i think i think let's uh, uh that's my opinion anyway um uh that you can create a job uh, you don't have to yes you will you'll have to look for some employment to get initial capital and whatever but you can you can create a job and and, and employ other people and also i think i like to think uh even right now and while i'm saying this i'm also still navigating career car this career field um i think i, I think we should also uh, learn to walk or one kilometer at a time instead of trying to figure out 100 kilometers ahead like this student can we just let them first of all get admission and then like do well in school like use all the opportunities that are in school like make friends extracurricular activities attend all those conferences like get all those opportunities on point and then now four years later let's now come and think about okay we now we want a job I think it's good to think ahead, but I think obsessing so much about 100 kilometers ahead will will hinder you from, uh, yeah, will will we'll just paralyze you. I think so. Yeah. Those two things, I think those are those are my opinions. I don't know, Doctor. I think you you could also sh chime in on this. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, the reality is that the, uh, the the classical mistake that we make in Kenya, and I have a student actually who who asked me a similar question. I'll just go back to that after answering this. Is we we always go to school with a job in mind you know um i will not mention your name you don't need to worry about it uh, my friend but there was a guy who told me he went to india mm. because his his departmental head mm -hmm. was going to retire around about the same time he would be through with his masters in india okay so he came back from india and the guy had been transferred and a younger guy had been brought in. Oh. So, I mean, this is, this is reality. You plan your life against something that you have no control only to realize later mm. that, you know, things happened. As, mm. as we always get people telling us, they say the only way to be sure about the future is to, plan, is, is, is to make it happen. The only future you are sure about is the one that you create yourself. Yes. So this guy went to India. He was expecting to, you know, come and, and, and take over from the boss. By the mm. time he came up, there was a guy who is going to retire by the time he has retired. Mm. So end of story. There yeah. was another guy um, not so long ago, about three weeks ago, yeah. who contacted me. He'd been admitted to an engineering class. The father said, no, you cannot go there because there are no jobs. Mm. So the guy ends up going for an education course. Mm. And then things go haywire. There was a problem with registration. Now he's looking at what can I do to go back to university, but to study medicine. Oh. So it is still the same problem that we have. And that's why when I speak to a lot of people, even those who want to go for a PhD, they mm. tell me, Hey, Seron, hey, you know, I have done a biology master's. What would you recommend for me to do as a PhD? I mean, mm. honestly, mm. I have no idea. Mm. And it's not because I don't respect you. It is because I cannot, I cannot, I cannot determine, mm. I cannot determine for you your career path. It mm. has to be something that comes from you mm. um, as, as a person. And yes. I think a bit of this problem really comes down to the way parents look at education in Kenya vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the amount of control that we have on our children yes. um, to, to an extent that we, we don't give them the freedom to decide, you mm -hmm. know. And I, I went through a lot of character development in, in our family, me and my wife. Mm. Um, sorry if she hears me, she will get a little upset that I'm talking about this. But, you know, our eldest son... Mm. We we always thought you know Felix you could you could become a whatever whatever mm. we wanted him to be and he said no Papa um, I wanted to be one and then I decided no I don't want I want to be two and I decided no I don't want now I have found something that I'm really passionate about I want mm. to be a psychologist mm. 
Mm. And I was like, okay, mm. um, why do you want to become a psychologist? In Kenya, that would be a mess. You know, it's mm. like not one of the best courses. And he said, you have to be realistic. We are in Germany mm. and, and psychology is one of the three top courses in Germany. Okay. It is, it's not even engineering, it's medicine, it's, it's law and then, and then psychology. Yes. Um, and, and so it was, it was his passion and, and he loves children and he wants to work with them. Mm. So long story short, he mm. ended up doing his bachelor's in, in the Netherlands in, oh. in psychology. Right. From a class of over 600 people, there were only 300 who graduated. Felix was one of them. Wow. So, well, you know, wow. the thing is about yes. the drive, the passion. Mm. Mm. If the thing is, if the thing that your child wants to study is what you let them study, mm. that inspiration comes from within their bowels, from yes. their bones. It burns yes. them. Yes. And, and, and you don't need to struggle, really. You, you, yeah. you just, our role as parents is to facilitate. That's yeah. what I try to do. Yeah. The other thing is, we have a very big gap in Kenya between what we study Mm. And the potential to imagine it can mm. be a business. Mm. You know, when I tell people, for example, that I, I have left my employer mm. to start my business, they yes. are like, oh, my goodness, how would you survive? <laughs> how would you pay your bills? And, yes. and this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but when I tell them, yes. a former PhD at the, the university where I was has six yes. companies at the moment wow. from, from his thesis, you know. Yes. And, and that tells you, mm. and I think you see it in America, you see it in the UK, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. startup culture that mm -hmm. people look at. I have discovered something in my thesis that yes. I think I can use to make money. Yeah. I don't have the money to start the business, yeah. but I have the idea. Mm. And can I go out there and look for somebody who has the money, yeah. present a proposal, an idea, a business idea, and then pitch the idea and let them, uh, you know, buy in. Startup, yeah. startup yeah. culture, venture capital is coming in and a lot of these other ideas which are actually mm. um, helping us. So yeah. I, I would not encourage anybody to go to school with a job in mind. Yes. I would encourage somebody to go to school with a business in mind. Yeah. Because that becomes um, a, a bigger drive than yeah. I am going to school. When I graduate, I want to go and work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I, I think our system, I think we need to we need to have another forum just talking about these alternative ways of thinking about career. Yeah. And I think I think we should also I think we should also have in mind that whatever course that we call it marketable, like engineering or medicine or whatever, I don't think it's hundred percent. I don't think anyone who graduates from medicine, for instance, because we know it's marketable, right? I don't know if it's hundred percent everyone gets a job. No. Like there is still a, there is still yeah there is a chance that no one employs you or they employ yeah. you and they don't pay you well or something like that. So I, I think um, uh, uh, yeah I, I I don't want to dilute what you've said, but I, yeah. I, I think we need yeah. to change. I think my mind. My mind has been changing slowly. Um, I have to uh, confess as well, only when I was in the UK and US, and like you mentioned, people are thinking about creating employment and creating something massive, creating the next Amazon, the next Facebook, so that we are not only consumers, but we are also creating jobs and creating mega companies for tomorrow. And I think mm -hmm. it's something that we should think about. And even I'm, I'm I was just thinking, even with that student who wants to do renewable energy, like they can build themselves they can do all these courses and all this, and they become a renewable energy consultant. And exactly. these companies will be consulting that person uh, for whatever whatever renewable energy projects they want to do. So I think we, yeah, we, I think we need to to open up our minds to more possibilities outside, just outside, just a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the the idea isn't it is to to convert the scientist into a business scientist to convert. Mm -hmm our people into entrepreneurs how do you become an entrepreneur how do you how do you move from i want to get a job to i want startup capital because i want to start a business yeah you know that that, yeah. that sort of thing and glad is as we as we go towards winding up so that we also yes. go through this this slide because it's very important you don't close it i think we need to repeat the uh, the message there yeah. francis tongoya says uh, all of us the entirety are all expecting communications. Dan Kangogo, who did his PhD at uh, Wageningen, says maybe I missed something. 
But for me, by the time you want to do a PhD, one needs to have an urge to do some form of research. PhD research is really about you more than anybody else. And more, yeah, at Wageningen University of Research, that's why they call it WUR, it's, it's University of Research. Uh, for instance, a PhD is your project. The professors come in to just guide you. It is up to you to ask the questions, the right questions. One needs to be the captain of his or her own ship. Romana says in Kenya, we lack workers in renewable energy sector. For example, in where I work, and Romana works in, uh, in an NGO. Romana went with me to Igaton, actually. Uh -huh. um, Romana Koeji. For example, where I work, Whenever we have, whenever we have employ, we, we employ workers in the sector, we employ electrical engineers, then retrain in renewable energy. But if we had graduates in the sector, it could be better. Lawrence Keegan says, I love your real life stories and experiences. I will advise this parent accordingly. Fantastic. Dr. Tari um, and our audience, thank you very much. I've seen your stars. Um, somebody sent stars you can send us stars there is a facebook these days when you comment you can send stars if you want to appreciate gladys and the job we are doing also on this show please send stars thank you very much kippy alvin you've sent us 310 stars that's fantastic um and felista is also sent us 75 stars going missing felista um gladys so taking it back again you have somebody who is saying, I don't know where to begin. I'm looking for a PhD. Mm -hmm. What is the minimum you require this person to be clear about before they come to look for you and I? They want to do a PhD and they don't know, maybe they are not sure about the project. Yeah. So I, I think, first of all, I'll, I'll have to say many people don't. I think very few people from my experience, it's a sampling from my friends, they know what they or they think they know what they want to research and then they end up maybe changing during the first few months or whatever. And also, I think it depends where you do your PhD. Uh, I think in the US, they give you a chance to experiment different labs and then make up your mind. Uh, in the UK, and, and from my experience from day one, I was a researcher uh, and, and I, it was a bit confusing because, yeah, uh, I ended up changing my research project a few months down the line. But anyway, bare minimum for me, I think especially for someone coming from not well low financially, I think number one thing is funding. You have to nail funding. Others, it will be a lot of stress uh, funding your PhD because it can be expensive because we are talking of, we're looking at five to 10 years sometimes, um, maybe three to maybe 10 years, somewhere in between there. So number one is funding. Um, if you are self-funding well and good, if, you are, if it's a scholarship, I, I hope it's full scholarship, but I think funding is really important. And then number two is that, you read some stories, at least maybe start with this PhD journey book. I feel like when I started, I kind of just went in not knowing roughly what to expect. And most of the things were just like knocking me on the face and I was really struggling to stay afloat. So from my experience, I'd say, just have a rough idea. You don't have to have 100% the idea of what to expect every year, every month, but just have a rough idea that you will be on this thing for more than three years, three years plus. Are you, is that okay with you? Do you have family, young family to think about? Do you have uh, something urgent that you, you need to be balancing with your PhD? And it's gonna be within, uh, in these three years plus, it's gonna be intense. You, PhD will be in your mind pretty much every day. So I think you have to think about, just have a rough idea of what a PhD is in terms of length and in terms of um, what will be required from you. And I think the easiest way to know, uh, my journey will not be a replica of your journey, and your, your journey dactari cannot be the same as mine, but I think we can learn from each other. And I think there are so many things that are parallel and we can learn from each other. So get a book like this or uh, follow someone, vlogger or a blogger, and just read about the experiences doing a PhD. And just hopefully they don't scare you, but I feel like the, you will get an idea of, of what to expect. So for me, those are the two things that I, I'll, I'll say, have funding uh, nailed, and then just have a rough idea of what this thing will be about, like the length and what will be required from you. Yeah, yeah. Kongo missing in uh, Gladys. I mean, for somebody who wants to come to Germany, the, the tips I would give are usually pretty simple. PhD in Germany 
is fully funded oh, by right. the DAAD, 100%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The moment you get what you only need in Germany for you to study. And you know, when I, I give this information and then somebody comes back and asks me, do you charge? No, it is free. This is information which is free. Yeah. Uh, Gladys didn't pay me to host her on this show and she's yeah. not going to pay me anything. I will. <laughs> we do it because it's community service. Mm. Um, so don't, don't, be, don't be shy. So to come to Germany for a PhD, all PhDs in Germany are funded by, by DAAD. Mm. And there are three ways you can do a PhD. You can do it in Germany. Mm. You can do it in something called in country, that means you do it within Nairobi or Moi or Kenyatta or Maseno or wherever, but DAAD will fund. And they are encouraging a lot of that at the moment because it is cheaper. Mm. They will spend less money on you than if you come to Germany because here they probably need to spend close to 2,000 euros per month on you for your PhD. Mm. Uh, and half of that is going to you, but the other half is going to meeting the social obligations, you know, health insurance, um, I don't know, whatever else that they do. So that one you can do. The second option is to do it in country. And then there is in region. You are in Kenya, you can do it in Malawi, you can do it in South Africa, you can do it in Tanzania, you can do it in Uganda. They will fund it. Mm. Um, it it's, those three options are viable. They can all be done. Mm. They can be done with a German supervisor, with a Kenyan supervisor. If you come to Germany, it has to be 100% German supervisor. And that becomes uh, slightly different. PhD in Germany has no coursework. If they are there, they are only minor. Mm. Most of them go straight into research and then you start your work. In China, if you went your PhD, you have to do some coursework. So you probably would take a semester of hybrid, you know, course and, and research. Uh, but in Germany, it is 100%. You go into research straight off. Except if you are doing some German language classes or something, then you can do evening classes. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I really want to, to get from our people, when you, when you approach me or approach Gladys and say, I want to study a PhD, that I want to study a PhD is the most useless statement you can ever make as a PhD student. And that's why a lot of you have seen when you write a statement like that, I don't answer. Because... I expect a PhD person to tell me, hey, Serone, I'd like to do a PhD in computer science and I am keen on Germany, US or Canada. At least let me know what is the subject you are interested in and where you want to go. Then we can start a conversation. If you come to me and say, I want to do a PhD, I'll just say, thank you very much. I'm busy with Sinonin Biotech. It's a new company that requires my attention. When you have grown up and you know how to communicate, then we can have a conversation. I am not being rude. I'm being fair to myself. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. I think I, I, that's something that I think we also underestimate and we are not taught how to do it very well, like how to package yourself. So you just say, hi, good morning. And then full stop. I, I think you've really, you've really nailed, nailed it. So um, it's, I think it's good to, to be professional and also, and, and say everything, just say, hi, yes, full stop, I'm so-and-so. And, and like you mentioned, I, I want to do PhD. And then also, I think uh, before you sign out in the message, put it clearly, what do you want there for? So say, okay, I need guidance on how to apply for scholarship or something. And then uh, you give the other person chance to like read the message and reply and give you help appropriately. Yeah. So I totally, totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot, Gladys. For the last one and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking and talking and chatting with Dr. Engineer Gladys Chepkrui Ngetit from Amalo in Greso South. She has done a fantastic piece of work writing two, two books. One of the current ones that we, are, we were launching here live on Kokwit was one on the PhD journey. It is currently available on Amazon. You can buy the hard copy. You can also buy uh, the Kindle version. The Kindle version, Gladys has the power to determine a certain level of discount. And she has offered very kindly, because of Cokeway, the 50% discount on the Kindle version, the ebook. So you can get it. Um, the the um, 
the address I have given on the comments there. We can also write it there. Gladys probably copy paste. I put it for you in the in the chat, and then you can paste it on the because this will be visible on the video, and then people will get um, will will get it. If you could copy that and put it as as a link on the Amazon. Um, okay, I'll put a link here. Yeah. Yeah, I have I've just shared with you on the uh, on the chat. All right. Yeah. And um how you buy? How you can buy the book? You can get it from um Gladys. I think the the green one is is not visible anymore. Maybe make it red. Uh this one and it's only yeah. valid for I have to mention next 5 hours, so make sure yeah. you advantage. Yeah. Valid for only 5 hours and then it is reverted back to a hundred percent. So yes. Gladys, where can somebody in Kenya buy the book? In Kenya, if you want the PhD journey, the one that we are launching today, text me on 0797-417700. Write your full name, please. And then uh, mention that you are, you are writing from uh, Corporate App Chase on, And then I'll call you tomorrow uh, and we'll organize how, how to get you the book wherever you are in Kenya. And uh, if you want a bowl, and it's going for 1,200 uh, Kenya shillings, coming down from $19, which is like 2,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, this is also limited uh, to only people who attended today. And then the bowl dream, if you want the bowl dream, if you want to hear more about uh, my stories, how I, 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 I transitioned from primary school with 298 marks to 80 in high school to where I am now, you can read all that from the bowl dream. And in addition to my story, there is also another friend, Dr. Elisha Ngatich, who writes about his story also and how he transitioned to where, where he is. Um, that is going for 800 Kenya shillings. Uh, do the same thing. Uh, just write the full name uh, for, and then mention that you are writing from Kokweta Apche Son and then which book you want. And, and, and I'll call you tomorrow. We organize how delivery can be done. And then you can also go to, if you, if you can buy on Amazon, um, you can get the ebook right now and you could be reading the book in the next hour at 3.99 if you go to Amazon and, and look for the book. And I think we had shown you guys how to do that. Just go to Amazon and you can uh, type in my name and you should see both, uh, both the books here and you choose whichever you want to buy. So this is the one that we are launching today. And I was saying also Amazon is also giving their own uh, discount for paperback. Uh, coming down from $19 to $15 now. So you can also buy from there. Super, fantastic. And there was something else that you mentioned, which is very important, isn't it? That we we read the book. We we then go back and react. We would like to kindly request you to... Yes, please. Go. Oh, yeah. So here, the, the, I'm just trying to highlight it. How can I highlight this? Please. Once you read, once you read the book, please go back to Amazon if you do not mind and write me a review. It could be one sentence; I don't really mind, uh, but I just I would just like to know what people think about it, just so that I can uh, update the next series. And and it also helps other people to know what the book is about and what sections kind of jumped out uh, to for you. So please, I really appreciate that. Good, Gladys. Closing remarks. Thank you for having me on this platform. Uh, and like I was, I was telling you, I really like it. And mostly because of the, because of the freedom to mix with Kalenjin. So I'm really sorry for, the, for our audience who don't understand uh, Kalenjin because we were mixing at some point. Um, and then also your audience are really amazing. And I like the feedback, that the, the, the comments, and they are active. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. We don't take it for granted um, that you've spent this time with us. I know you could be doing something different. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, I want to say for because we are launching we are launching the PhD journey uh, today. So whatever as you think about if you if you consider in the PhD, um, I wish you all the best, and I wish you um, all the best as you continue pursuing whatever bold dream that you have on your checklist. I hope you don't get scared, and I hope I hope you march forward even when there is fear. And I hope you do achieve uh, your bold dreams. And thank you so much. Asante, go Very good. 
Kongo ibi simpi kwa kivuga lengine you've all been following a very very interactive, very very informative um, session today with Dr. Gladys Tip growing at it. Uh, super happy and excited to have launched her second book on this forum, and we are offering you that attractive discount courtesy of our launch today. Please enjoy the rest of the weekend and then the uh, remaining part of the week ahead of you, and uh, glad is all the best. Kongwe, Kongwe. And keep writing, eh? Yes, I'll, I'll keep writing. <laughs> If people okay. keep reading. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. I will uh, I will release you guys. You know, thank you for being with us. All of you who are at home and wherever you are, just you know, go watch whatever is remaining now and think about this idea and get in touch with Gladys. Uh, please don't abuse the phone, don't jam it. Um, let's use it responsibly. Fantastic. Congo missing big chocks, is it missing? <laughs>